Hi there, and welcome to this week's Owl Diary. Hello again, Ryan here from Owl Adventures, the head falconer of Owl Adventures, and this here is our largest and oldest bird. This is Henrietta, and she's our 19 year old European or Eurasian eagle owl. I'm here on display in the York Museum Gardens again. There's some volunteers helping me, of course. It's the middle of the summer holidays, it is busy. We've got a little gap at the minute, and today it's a bit cloudier and a little bit breezy, but it's a nice day all the same. And I thought what I'd do at the beginning of this week's Owl Diary is go through a few of the random but very common questions we get asked when we're on display by members of the public. So when it comes to the big owls here, one of the most common things is, can owls spin their head all the way around? Well, the truth is there's only one girl who can spin her head all the way around, and that's a little girl out of the Exorcist movie. Owls like this, however, with their 14 vertebrae in their neck, can rotate their head around very easily to 180 degrees. When they really go for it, they can get to a maximum of about 270 degrees. It does start to cut off the blood circulation, however, when they go past 180. So they don't do that for too long. So Henry here is going to go back on her perch. So we're going to put her just under the gazebo here. That way, if it does rain a little bit, she'll keep dry and she'll fly back to her perch. I'm holding on to the leash here. If I fly back, here we go. When we do that, we're going to be careful that our wings don't hit the gazebo or anything like that. So this tall perch here with a rubber grip top is really good for the birds because it gives them a chance to see more. And visual stimulation is quite a big thing when it comes to keeping birds of prey, especially owls. Owls like Henrietta here will sit and do as little as possible most of the time as it is really the best way to survive. So one of the common questions we get are, are these birds rescued? Now these are born in captivity, they're hand-reared, they're tame. Rescue birds are wild birds that get injured in the wild and we bring them in, we bring them, take them and release them back into the wild again. And if you follow me this way, we'll go around the outside here actually. We've got a hole going on here with a falcon, don't mind us. I just thought I'd explain, because something else we've been asked about recently is this banner. Do you want to get a close-up of the banner there? So if you look at the banner here, we've got some examples of some of the work we've done. Now this one here is a tawny owl that was um, found underweight, as it says, by a river. And that one was released back into the wild again, but it was uh, two attempts. The first release, it just flew to the ground and I was able to pick it up again. So we gave it a couple more weeks to recoup and then off it went into the tree. And when that happens, we say best of luck, essentially. Okay, down here, we've got the little owl. Now you can see the eyes are shut. This was clipped by a car. And eventually, luckily, with some time, it got better and that little concussion actually worked and it opened its eyes and it went, oh, what are you, a human? These two, unfortunately, didn't end well. The buzzard here was one of many birds that get illegally shot. Terrible thing, it is illegal, these birds are protected. And when that happens, we do work with the wildlife police. Now this one, even though it was shot, we actually had it for a number of weeks before we realised it was no good and unfortunately it wasn't going to be able to survive in the wild. The injury that it sustained was never really going to improve enough for it to be successfully hunting in the wild. Even though buzzards often go for carrion as well, they do need to be able to hunt. So that was unfortunately put down. And this one here, this barn owl, this was really tragic. Both wings were broken on this one here and because of that, pinning both wings would mean it very, very difficult for it to heal properly and survive in the wild. So the specialist vet with myself, we made the joint decision the best thing was to have that one put down, unfortunately. But you do get lots of different reasons for these birds being brought in. Right then, I'd like to say we've got more for you to see, so enjoy the rest of this week's Owl Diary. Well, it's another day and another event. Well, it was. I'm now back in the reptile room or the snake room or whatever you want to call it because it was just far too windy at the event to actually film this and you'd have had lots of noise in the microphone, a bit like a bit of the first part of the video today. So I've just put them away and the party I did, mobile zoo party, that's what we call it, that's our mobile zoo part of the business. And we've done loads of them over the last 10 years or so and they are really quite special and unique. You can do them with adults, children. That's the great thing about this job is that pretty much any age, any demographic really find the animals very interesting. So we had a party there with about a dozen children, a few parents, of course, in a lovely big field. I got to fly plenty of birds. We flew with the barn owl, for example, Bailey there, hand to hand. 
little game there and he got his little rewards of chicken of course each time we also did handling with all sorts of things including cockroaches and snakes like the corn snake there as you can see in the hands which they really loved and engaged with them all so it's bedtime for them all here we've got the big snake here in fact i reckon we can just about open the door and let you have a little peek he's wanting to say hello will not you there he is having a little sniff at the camera that's boris he's our boa constrictor you may have seen him before in our videos here he's on the newspaper which is crunched up a little bit he's got his water and hide his lamp's now off it's on a timer and it's actually still yeah it's quite warm in there still it only cools down a little bit on an evening because of course we want to keep their temperatures you know about the same as what they should be so i'm now going to do some cleaning up in here while i'm here a bit of tidying up and nothing really to clean out that was done a couple of days ago but just a few bits and pieces and uh, weigh some of them as well and just generally get on with the week. These exotics will be appearing at the York Balloon Fiesta coming up at the end of August and also at the Yorkshire Engine Traction Valley. A lot of words to say there, got it out in one go, which we'll also have our birds of prey and that really big flying show, which we're really excited about. So I'm going to get these sorted on with this week's How Diary. <laughs> So we've got Roland here, the four-year-old Harris Hawk. He does love to chase a pigeon sometimes, but let's not worry about that right now. The minute he's sat here enjoying the outdoors, we do like to give him lots of time to sunbathe, but unfortunately it's a bit grey. In fact, it's just spitting a little bit at the moment, but he doesn't mind too much. And being a desert bird, this particular type of bird of prey, will often, if it is raining, put his wings out and get as much rain as possible because his instinct tells him that rain is actually a, a rare thing. Now, I think it's time for this week's Falconry Term of the Week. The Falconry Term of the Week. This week's Falconry Term is a bit of a gross one, but you'll like this. The word is slicing. And this refers to a bird of prey, just like the Harris Hawk here, when it poos. Yes, kids, that's what I said. Because when they do that, they lift their tails up and they fire out a projectile hit of poop basically enough and that's called slicing it's a way of getting it away from themselves so if you look at the barrier here there's almost not enough room if someone was stood here but it's not that bad it kind of falls down like this we wouldn't want to have someone get messy or anything like that so that's what they do slicing is the following term of this week and it's essentially a fancy word for when a harris hawk goes to the toilet so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this week's Owl Diary. We've got lots coming up in the future. Yacht Balloon Fiesta in a couple of weeks' time, two weeks today, in fact. And we're going to do an Owl Diary special on the Yacht Balloon Fiesta because it's a magnificent event. And we've got lots of weddings coming up and various things like that. So make sure you tune in for next week's Owl Diary. As always, thanks for watching.